Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and bring it down to bite-sized pieces. So just like the thumbnail suggests, there's something going on in the background. I'm gonna bring some stories to light, which uh, might be able to give us a, a little bit more insight into what is going on. First up, SoftBank to put $75 million into Peter Thiel, the billionaire, backed crypto exchange. And what I find interesting about this is just not about the money that is going on, but what this exchange is actually going to do and how uh, more banks are getting into the cryptocurrency space. On top of that, we're gonna take a look at uh, a uh, 2.3 trillion asset center management capital group buys 12% of MicroStrategy shares. Why is this so important? Uh, it's because uh, MicroStrategy is pretty much a Bitcoin ETF at this point. And we're also gonna take a look at what is going on with uh, BlackRock and Larry Fink. And I think people have got it twisted as to uh, what he said and how much they actually have into MicroStrategy and how far back it actually went. And then uh, we're also gonna talk about bankers. Speaking of which, we need to talk about how Bank of America just approved Bitcoin futures trading for some clients. And we're gonna talk about just who those clients actually are. Hint, hint, they got a lot of money. And then finally, we have to talk about T-Coin. So we'll take a look at all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on into the market. And first, I want to blow this up just to let you know that uh, if you are a member of Trade the Chain, just so you know, uh, if you click on right here, it says Cent Token Airdrop at the very top right here, uh, they are going to uh, give you uh, Cent Token. So uh, be aware of that. And then also uh, market cap today, uh, not considering Cent Token, is 1.3 trillion. So we're up almost a percentage. Watch out. That's amazing. So let's see what else is up. Hopefully something has buoyed us. And for all the talk about, let me blow this up so you can actually see it. So for all the talk about Bitcoin going to 28K, even for me, I, even I was talking about maybe 26K, it's, it, it's pretty amazing the resiliency of Bitcoin. I mean, we, we, we dipped past 30,000 just a little, bo little bit ago. Uh, I was on James's channel of our best answers, and he picked that up real fast. And he talked about how there's like these, there's, there's sell walls and buy walls, and you can take a look at FTX. And as soon as it hit below 30,000, there were so many buyers that he was barely just to catch that falling knife. And it's amazing that, uh, again, Bitcoin stays resilient, yep, up 2% for the day. Ethereum up a little bit, and really everything's kind of in that sideways pattern. Maybe a little bit of losses here, like Solana down 3%, but Stellar's up 4%. So just a little choppy what's going on. And then if you're a big trader, I'm not, but uh, take a look at uh, sentiment analysis, which uh, with a 90% assurance, this is what we're, we're looking at uh, for these uh, big plays and if i would look at uh, maybe red coin bakery token no idea what that is linear kucoin cosmos digital note and kyber and uh these are the types of spreads uh, that they're looking at anyhow let's uh let's jump into today's story because i mean this is pretty interesting this exchange called bullish and bullish we'd actually covered this article about three or four days ago and what's amazing to me is that the former head the former president of the new york stock exchange <laughs> is going to be the ceo uh, of this cryptocurrency exchange. So it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And I think this gentleman knows a couple of people he could pull in uh, to do this. And to me, it's not so much about the um, exchange as being another exchange because we have so many, but what they're doing is they're partnering up with Block One, the same people who made uh, EOS. Yeah, go figure, EOS, right? And uh, they're bringing the best parts of DeFi, gaining yield uh, by uh, giving out or not staking, but providing liquidity for cryptocurrencies. So I think a lot of different players are like, hmm, I don't know about this, this, you know, trading it and doing all these things and, you know, the hacks, whatever else. But I think what would be great is if I could just gain yield just by giving up a little of, uh, of uh, crypto and uh, making the liquidity part. So anyhow, I thought that was interesting. And then the plot thickens. So SoftBank put 75 million into Peter Thiel back crypto. First of all, I forgot this whole thing that Peter Thiel was actually backing this crypto exchange. And Peter Till, if you don't know, he's part of the PayPal mafia, as I like to call it. Those are the guys that actually created PayPal. And he's done, gone on to a lot of uh, great things uh, as far as like investing. I mean, I'm not saying he's a great person. I'm just saying he's done great things as far as like uh, making a ton of money. One of those is uh, able to stock away a bunch of uh, shares into his Roth IRA at like pennies for the shares of PayPal. And it grew into 5 billion. Try doing that tax-free, crazy. And I'm getting off topic, sorry. So anyhow. SB Northstar, a wholly owned subsidiary of Japanese financial giant SoftBank, set to pour 75 million into bullish crypto exchange, which is yet to be launched publicly. 
crypto exchange that has the backing of billionaire Pierre Thiel. We know that. It was created by Block One, the company behind uh, EOS, uh, you know, the, of course, those guys. So last week, it was reported that Bullish would hold a public offering through a special purpose acquisition company or SPAC merger. With its upcoming public debut, Bullish will join such crypto stalwarts. And this does not sound good when I'm reading this. Because if when I'm reading this, just kind of remember what happened to all these guys when they went public and everything. Uh, backed, Circle, and of course, Coinbase, whose direct listing in mid-April marketed the top of the latest crypto bull run. So that's the big thing. So just so you know, just so you know, uh, those three that you said was not a very bullish sentiment. I mean, we can we can look back, especially what happened with Coinbase, and it was uh, it was pretty awful because, of course, the ICO. I mean, the ICO, uh, the public offering, or however they said it. Yeah, as right after that, everything just kind of crashed. So I'm hoping that with bullish. It will actually bring more people in because of what I just talked about, the, the big aspects of, of DeFi, providing liquidity and getting a pretty good yield just for uh, you know providing your cryptocurrency. I think that will be a big push. But I mean, the big push to me really was that you know these banks, SoftBank is getting into the fray and they're like, yeah, $75 million. And they've also gone into other different crypto. There was a uh, part I didn't make mention here is that in June, SoftBank put 200 million into Mercado Bitcoin largest crypto exchange in Brazil. So again, when people are talking about how this is a this is a, a, a very bearish moment and everything's gonna go down and crash, and I just don't believe it. I think every time people, and even myself, think we know exactly where the market's going, it does the exact opposite. So when everybody is doing the exact same thing and they're calling for, this is awful, this is awful, it's bearish, it's awful, take a look at the big picture. When in doubt, zoom out, and really take a look at where all the lem I mean, not the lemmings, excuse me, the masses are going. And just sometimes it's best just to, to have an alternative opinion. That's all I can say. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. Where we talk about uh, this company right here, Capital Group, buys 12% of Micro. So what's going on here? So according to several experts, software company MicroStrategy has become a proxy for a Bitcoin ETF, which is true because... Uh, Look, MicroStrategy is a data analytics company, and I'm sure they do great things. But when they started to buy Bitcoin, a ton of it, then all of a sudden people are like, we want to buy that company. They had no interest in the data analytics part. It was all about, well, if they buy Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin goes up, then their shares will go up. It's kind of like an ETF in that really whacked out way without having an ETF. So they could actually get exposure to crypto without buying crypto. Same thing is happening uh, with all the uh, uh, Bitcoin mining companies like Mara and places like that. And also, I think what's gonna, also going to happen, um, don't forget that uh, Celsius is also into Bitcoin mining now. They just dumped $200 million into it a couple months ago. Anyhow, per an SEC filing, Titan Capital International Investors, a U.S.-based division of investment firm Capital Group, purchased 12% of MicroStrategy's common shares. Documents filed on June 30th reveals a purchase of 953,000 shares from the software company. With 2.3 trillion in assets under management and 7.6 billion in annual revenue, Capital Group is one of MicroStrategy's largest investors. On top of that, BlackRock, with 9 trillion in assets under management, is the company's largest investor. In total, BlackRock has a almost 50% stake in Micro, which translates into a bunch of shares with a lot of money. Okay, great. So here's the thing. We see this and we're like, okay, so when, and this, this goes on to my next piece where, where we're talking about here about uh, uh, BlackRock and, and uh, Larry Fink and what he said a couple of days ago, where he said, uh, Larry Fink, CEO, BlackRock, nine trillion assets under management. So there's very little demand for crypto lately. And everybody's like, oh, really? And even I said this, like, oh, really? Well, why did you invest so much into MicroStrategy? And people, like, when I hear it, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. But I did a little digging because I'm like, I want to know when they initially invested in the microstrategy. That was the big question. And I had to take a look at a website called Fintel, and it kind of just takes a look at uh, the history of what uh, BlackRock has invested into, uh, BlackRock ownership in microstrategy incorporated. And you can see right here, it starts right here, February 5th, 2000, not starts, excuse me, ends February 5th, 2021. And it goes all the way down to February 10th, 2012. And I was interested, I'm like, I wonder if, this is BlackRock or somebody else. So I pulled up the SEC filing, which you can see right here. And it states clearly, let me blow this up so everybody can see it. Uh, this was MicroStrategy Inc. 
name of insurer, uh, the title of class of securities, that's a common stock. This is on December 30th, 2011, the date of event which requires filing. And uh, who was this? Name reporting persons? BlackRock, right there. So um, look, MicroStrategy is a data analytics company. And from what I can tell, it looks to me like uh, BlackRock didn't just get into the foray of MicroStrategy. They've been investing for quite some time, way before Michael Saylor got into Bitcoin. Because remember, Michael Saylor used to, used to call Bitcoin a fraud and he wasn't even into it. And then just recently he got into it. So um, the narrative around that, I think falls a little bit flat. I could be wrong, which I think, let me know what you think in the comment section. But uh, I still believe that BlackRock, because <laughs> here's the thing. Larry Fink previously said that Bitcoin has caught the attention of many people and that the crypto market was still relatively small compared with others. He just said this like three months ago. And BlackRock said when, Wednesday it has about 10 trillion of assets under management. Again, so good for them. But Larry Fink just based this on a trip he took over the last two weeks. And he says, nobody asked him about crypto. So there's very little demand. Let's break it down, okay? Let's take a look at the bankers and what's going on. So we covered this before. I'm just gonna do a real quick recap. JP Morgan, we know those guys, not a big fan of crypto. And UBS, they were also, the bank, they also were shutting off uh, deposits. Plan to onboard active crypto strategies. And just so you know, uh, UBS, the biggest Swiss bank, started exploring ways to offer crypto to its affluent clients this May, not too long ago. Of course, there was a big dip, um, which they're probably very happy because recently they just said, hey, stay clear of crypto. This is on July 5th. This article was on July 14th. So what's going on? Well, if you're giving your, your uh, prospects, your affluent customers, you're like, hey, here's a great opportunity. And it's really going down. If they can just send a little bit of FUD message out there, they can get it for a little bit of lower price. And remember, in traditional markets, I mean, 2 3% is like a great year, I guess. Um, so if they can actually pull this price down, good for them and their affluent uh, uh, customers are like, those guys are geniuses. Those are fantastic. Good job. And uh, they didn't do anything but just uh, manipulate the price. Again, manipulation, I still think it's here. Can I say if it's 5% or 8.2% or 7%? Or or no. But can I say it's here? Yeah, because it's everywhere. <laughs> and then uh, moving on, uh, also as far as like banks goes, NYDIG partnered with, uh, par there's a partnership with like 650 different banks and credit unions, uh, which is up to 18.3 million customers will soon be able to buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin directly from their bank accounts. We had, we had uh, talked about this before. So again, look at what's going on. There's something brewing in the background. I just feel it like that's what's going on. There's all these different deals being made. There's all these different banks getting into it, which is really kind of weird if you think about it, because before they were like totally against it. And all of a sudden it's like they see the writing on the wall. Then you got these big in institutions and entities going, you know what? We don't really, we're not going to publicly say anything. But then behind the scenes, they're doing a lot of different acquisitions. They're doing a lot of different money uh, plays like we just talked about as far as like uh, 75 million to a crypto exchange again. So can I say with 100% assurance that this is totally 100% bullish? No, I can't. But I just see the writing on the wall about what's going on. Do I think we're in for some uh, another rocky month? Potentially. I think July is going to suck. So far, I've been correct. It has not disappointed. And we'll see what happens in August. Anyhow, that's what I got for that part. And then speaking of banks, let's talk about Bank of America as they approve Bitcoin futures trading for some clients, some clients. Can you guess who they are? Like most institutions, the bank has been conservative, Bank of America, in its approach to the crypto sector, which is good, good for them. But due to the large amount of margin required to trade the futures, it is now allowing some clients to access the crypto market. These clients are setting up to trade Bitcoin futures, which are cash settled. So just remember, cash settled. It's not like they're actually getting, you know, the actual Bitcoin, but it does have a mental and psychological effect to the market, uh, even though it is Bitcoin futures. And one or two may have already gone live. A number of investment banks are reportedly allowing clients to invest in crypto products. In March, Goldman Sachs confirmed plans to relaunch its crypto trading desk after a three-year hiatus. Why do you think that is? Because everything was going up and there's so much demand because they're, look, they're not stupid. If you've got 
a bunch of different uh, individuals, a bunch of different clients who go, we'd like to put money into this. Their job is to make money. So they're like, let's do that. So what did they do? They started their this, this uh, uh, trading desk after a three-year hiatus because there's more demand. In May, the investment bank started buying and selling Bitcoin futures and block trades through the CME group. So great. So again, uh, I think there's something going on in the background. I could be wrong. I think that uh, we're going to see some fireworks later. But uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. I want to beat a dead horse. Let's talk about uh, T-Coin. What is it? Well, it's nothing. It's worthless. That's what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a coin that we created on the Cardano blockchain. Uh, me and the guys from the new stake pool. And uh, we're going to be airdropping that to at random to people, anybody uh, who is invested into <laughs> the D news stake pool. So uh, if you have Cardano, first of all, why haven't you staked it? It's super simple. It never leaves your wallet. There's no slashing penalties. You can stake and unstake at will. Uh, usually it's four to six, 6% 6 APY. We're averaging around 5.1, somewhere around there, 5.2. Just depends on the, on the, cause we have two different stake pools. And to show you exactly how easy it is, just go to, see that thing that spins above my head every time? Dan teaches crypto, 100% free website. Just go there, click on the menu. Uh, and it depends if you're on your, your mobile or whatnot. Go to ADA staking. It's gonna take you to this handy dandy uh, web page. This video is going to pop up about 20 minutes. It's going to tell you exactly how to stake, how we compare to other stake pools, how to use the Daedalus, Yoroi, ADA Lite wallet, and everything else. And just remember, you, lucky you, get a totally useless coin called Tomato Coin. <laughs> and that is it for today. So look, uh, that's all we got. And uh, again, I think there is a lot of bearish news out there. And depending on who you talk to or look at or whoever else, I mean, we just covered a story yesterday where Clem, some guy who, who thinks Bitcoin's going to 8,000. I brought on uh, CJ Reichel, uh, follow him on Twitter uh, from Market Rebellion, really good at the TA charts. And he's like, that's, I don't see that. And a lot of people don't. But again, some people are calling for a bear, some people are calling for a bullish. But in reality, you just have to take a look at the big picture. Where do you think things are going? Do you think Bitcoin's going to zero? I think Ethereum is just going to be wiped away. I think Satoshi Nakamoto is going to come out of the shadows. Probably not. And uh, we'll probably see some pretty good things. Now, I can't say when. I just know it's going to happen. And that's why right now I'm just accumulating. So that is it for today. So thanks so much for staking all the way to, uh, with me to the end. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are time sensitive. And we'll be dropping uh, the uh, Avalanche review on D News Clips, which we go more in depth over there. And we'll do that hopefully in the next couple of days. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.